In Rugveda, there is a story about Aditi and Brahma. Aditi is the divine mother of all gods. But actually, Aditi, Diti, direction. Aditi, no direction, means no limit. If you have direction, you have limit. So this is endless, boundless, profound space. This is Adi Prakriti. And this is Brahma, the creator, the Purusha, the higher consciousness. This Aditi, the Divine Mother, she gave birth to the nine zodiac, the twelve zodiac Rashi. Mesh Rushub, Mesh Rushab, Mitunkar, Kasimva, Kanyatru, Vrushik, Dhan, Makar, Kumbha. I mean, these are Sanskrit, like Aries to Pisces, all twelve. Plus, she gave she is the mother of walk, means speech. And all planets came. So this, in a way, the Rigveda talks about the creation of universe. In that, the first breath of Aditi is prana. So, prana is the breath which joins Purusha and Prakriti. And we just now share together about functional aspect of prana, prana, vyan, vodan, saman, apan. But there are dasha prana, the others are naga, naga prana, kurma, krukala, devadatta. And finally, Dhananjay. These are Upapran, subordinate. Upapran. So, Naga, we open the mouth, we open the eyes. Naga means cobra. He does pus. It's the same thing whenever you do pus, you sneeze, Naga. So sneezing. Huh? Don't feel shy to sneeze. Sneeze happily. That is Nagavayu. It, it is a stimulus. Kurma. Kurma means turtle. You know, when turtle stretches the legs and neck, if there is some danger, they withdraw. Hmm? So withdrawal of senses. Introspection. Withdrawal. To go inside. And kurma is contraction, like flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, all these anatomical movement. So contraction is a kind of flexion. So that is kurma vayu. Means this is the energy field that passing through the neuron to perform those actions. Naga kurma. Then krukala. Krukala is burping. Krukala, krukala, burping, burping, burping. <laughs> when you burp, you are using krukala. So, it is burping. It is a kind of udan. Then, Devadatta is relaxation. And to go to sleep. You sleep because of that Devadatta. Datta means to give. Then you drop your senses, you drop your body, you drop everything and you go within. But there is something in a deep sleep that tells you that that sleep was gorgeous, that sleep was very sound. Who is that? That is pure consciousness. So, even in a deep sleep, your brain is active. In a deep sleep, you forget your sensory perception. In a deep sleep, you forget your body, you forget your bank account. You have to, otherwise you will not get sleep. So, you withdraw everything. That is Deva Datta. Datta means to give up. Totally give up everything. Then you go into the sleep, relaxation. 
and dhananjaya dhananjaya is sustenance sustenance means dhananjaya is present throughout the body even person may be dead still that vayu is present therefore other spirit cannot enter the body otherwise there is a long line to have body without body there is no sensual world and any body is necessary to have tactile concrete experience without body there is no pleasure and there are so many spirits around you within you they are passing through your breath but dhananjay doesn't allow them to stay is a go out this is my territory hmm? so this dhananjay in hindu religion when somebody is dead they cremate the body in cremation especially elder son has the right to do that cremation because it is related to the asti dhatu and they put the body on a pile of wood they cover the body with the wood and the elder son lit the fire and all wood is burning body is burning and stage comes that you will hear the sound phat the cranium burst then dhananjay Re- relieves very profound it's a cremation is the best way i'm not criticizing all other religion they they also have their wonderful reasoning why they bury there must be some reason no doubt but when you cremate the dead body and the the skull burst then the final attachment of that soul to the body is gone then he has he can change the plane ticket and go to some different state so that is life after death there is a life after death about which we don't know so life after death is guided by dhananjay dhana means wealth and perfect health is the wealth your body is the wealth so these are called upprana and they are while doing pranayama all these functions are well regularized so this is very interesting from rigveda thank you sir so this is an object you are looking at the tree the inverted image of the tree takes place on the retina there is a prana at the nerve ending that creates sensation then mental faculty mind which is called manas oh sorry manas is the mind and mind creates feeling mind feels it then buddhi buddhi is the reasoning capacity then smriti memory and smriti does 
recognize, recognition, recognition, and then chitta. Chitta is image making machinery. An image maker is ahankar, ego. Ahankar is the image maker. And beyond that is a pure flame of awareness. This is called Atman, Atman, the soul, the spirit, the Ru. Now, this is very interesting. This is just a conceptual diagram that when you look at the tree and you do optical perception or you listen to the sound, and you perform auditory perception. So olfactory, auditory, tactile, gustatory, all these sensory perception, prana plays very important role. So inverted image of the object is a stimulus, prana creates sensation. Because within the retina, there are cone cells, rod cells, Cone cell perceive color and rod cell perceive black and white. These cells, they contain pranic vibration. When you look at the red flower, then pranic vibration, the particle of that red light has certain frequency and it stimulates same frequency, your prana carries same frequency. Nothing is red there, it is in your retina. It is in your retina that has similar vibration. So the light particle coming from the red flower stimulate the particles within the retina with the same frequency and prana carries that same frequency to the consciousness. Therefore you see red flower, green leaves. This is very interesting that prana carries that sensation to the manas, mind feel it. Whatever mind is feeling, it carries to the buddhi. Buddhi does reasoning. Buddhi says, oh, this is, not, this is a tree, this is not a house, or this is not a cloud. So that reasoning is done. Then memory supports reasoning. Memory does recognition. Memory tells, I have seen many trees like that. It is a tree. Hmm? So that recognition is there. Whatever memory has recognized, based upon that recognition, your chitta create vritti. Vritti is picture. Chitta vritti druk sukham tadasmeham tadasmeham Chitta vritti, vritti is image, vritti is samskar. So chitta is the faculty of the mind. It is your subconscious mind. It create image. You have your own image. You have image of your husband. You have image of your teacher. And your relationship is through the image. If that image is hurt, relationship is hurt. For that reason, chitta is image making machinery. And image maker is ahankar. Every image nourishes ahankar. And ahankar is eye former. And then Atman, the soul, the spirit, the pure awareness, the consciousness is witnessing. Witnessing. This witnessing is Sat, Chid, Ananda. Chid, Ananda. Ananda is bliss, joy. Chid is awareness. And Sat is the ultimate truth. So, you are Satchidananda. You are the truth that you have to discover. And therefore, Pranayama will improve the spiritual function of Prana and will unfold Sat, Chid, Ananda in your daily relationship, in your daily existence with one another. That is a very profound spiritual function of prana.
then you will realize this wonderful sutra nitya shuddha buddha mukta bhava meshamatmana bhavayan sharindriyani sanniyamya nischala asti vastu chidghanam jagat prasuti karanam na nashvaram tadudbhavam jagat tamam nudam chiyad tat padaika vachakam sadamrutam niranjanam chitta vritti druksukham tadasmiham tadasmiham chitta vritti druksukham because cessation of chitta vritti happens through pranayama then you can see that you are nitya shuddha buddha mukta swabhava you are ever pure ever eternal by nature you are enlightened nitya shuddha buddha mukta bhava misham atmana atman the self your self is god that is why the veda says aham brahmasmi i am the brahman god doesn't come from cloud God comes within. That is why God is called Khuda. Khud means cell. Khuda. Alahak. A is the first letter. H is the last letter. Who acquires right from the first letter to the last letter? Alahak. Allah. Ilallahi Allah. Muhammad Rasulullah. So what Islam call Allah, Hindu call Satchidananda. No difference. It is just the same. Khuda. Self. Atma. Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta Bhava Misham Atmana Bhavayan Sharindriyani Sanniyamya Nishchala The Atman, the awareness, the consciousness operate into every cell, tissue, organ, system. But still it is Nishchala, immobile. It looks mobile, but it is immobile. It is non-mover, mover, you know. Non-mover, mover. Everything moves in His presence. Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta Bhava Misham Atmana Bhavayan Sharindriyani Sanniyamya Nishchala Asti Vastu Chidghanam Asti Vastu, the real existing Vastu, the substance is Atman. Everything is perishable, body is perishable, body is subject to chain, mind is perishable, mind is subject to chain, thought is perishable, thought is subject to change. There is one thing is eternal. That is yourself. So whatever happened to you, you are not that. If sadness happened to you, you are not sadness, you are the witnesser of sadness. Don't become sad by identifying yourself with the sadness. If you feel unhappy, it is not you. You are the witnessing awareness of the unhappiness. And this is the gift of pranayama. Pranayama will take you to that dimension of life. That is the whole secret of Kriya Yoga. Paramahamsa Yogananda, such a highly enlightened master, his guru, Yukteswar, his guru, even Lahiri Mahashe, and the Paratpara guru is Babaji. He is still alive. Because Babaji does pranayama. These are the ideal, eternally experiencing the beauty, the glory of pranayama. Yukteswar, then Nityananda ji, and Paramahams Yogananda, and you can go to Babaji. Even Lord Krishna, he was a great yogi. And he used to do pranayama. Buddha, such a great enlightened master, he used to do pranayama too. His pranayama is vipassana, watching the breath. So those get even Sri Ram and his guru Vashishta, saptanam yoga bhumi nam abhyasaha kriyate katham kidrishani sa chinnani bhumi kam pratiyogina. This is a dialogue between Sri Ram and his guru. And you will surprise. Vashishta Muni, he was in deep meditation and he saw pralay. Pralay means dissolution. So many times the world dissolved and again recreated. This sounds weird, but just listen. 
he saw seven dissolution of the universe, pralay. Nothing was there, sky above, water below, nothing. It is like a big tsunami. And there was nobody, but Vashishta was there doing pranayama. So he heard a laughter. He said, my God, who is laughing here? There is nobody is here. He looked there and he sat under the tree, only that tree, that piece of land, and this Vashishta was there. So Vashishta is one of the great Rushi, he is the master of pranayama. Before, thousands of years before even Patanjali, Patanjali is child in front of this great Rushi. I love Patanjali, he is a great master, but as compared to Valmiki, as compared to Vashishta, and as compared to great Krishna, Patanjali, he just did wonderful compilation and he made yoga as a science. I love Patanjali, cute little baby, very beautiful. <laughs> but Vashishta, when he saw that, somebody is laughing. So there was a crow, Kaka Brishundi Rushi. That name of the Rushi is Kaka Brishundi. Kaka means crow. And Kaka Brishundi say, my child Vashishta. Vashishta was surprised that somebody is calling him child. You think that you, you have seen seven pralay, I have seen countless pralay. No limit. Because Aditi is limitless. You are limitless. And every time when you go to sleep, it is a sort of pralay. Everything is gone. Your body is dissolved, mind is dissolved, thoughts dissolved. Everything is dissolved. You enter into the inner silence. It is a kind of pralay. So, you will see that pranayama brings you longevity of life. Not only that, pranayama unfolds inner feeling of sat, chid, ananda. Sat means truth, eternity. Chid means awareness, chaitanya, and bliss, the joy, ananda. So this is one of the beauty of this sutra. I am just sharing with you little sutra here and there, but this is very important because it is connected to our day-to-day -day life breath. So in the human body, there are 72,000 nadis. These are pranic pathway. And in the cosmos, there is a prana. And these 72,000 nadis, out of them, these most important nadis are Ida, Pingala, Shushumna. So, So this green color is Sushumna, the central canal of the spinal cord. 
this is right side, this is left side. The left nadi blue is Ida, the left sympathetic trunk. And right one, which is red one, is Pingala. And their meeting is the third eye, which is, there is a decussation of the fibers. So, your right half of the body is governed by the left hemisphere. And left half of the body, left half of the body is governed by right hemisphere. That's why Mother Nature has taken too much pain to create cute little nose. If there is only one hole, hole, enough. We can breathe through the hole. They do tracheostomy, you can breathe through that, that hole. Why Mother Nature has taken so much effort to create septum? Our body is bilateral symmetrical. We have right hemisphere, left hemisphere, right ear, left ear, right eye, left eye, right nostril, left nostril, coming back to the right chambers of the heart, left chambers of the heart, right kidney, left kidney, right ovary, left ovary. So right and left, these two aspects of the body, they are all connected. So they have done that experiment in Lonavala near Pune, Bombay. There is a Kaivalya Dham, they do this experiment, they are, they are doing great research on yoga. So they block the right nostril and yogi breathe through the left nostril and they put some electrode, occipital and frontal and parietal and they found the electroencephalogram changes the vibration when person was breathing through the left nostril. If you breathe through the right, left nostril, you activate your right brain. And then you inhale through the left, exhale through the right, again inhale through the right and exhale through the left, you activate your left brain. So, right breath cycle is solar energy. Solar energy. While left breath cycle is lunar energy. lunar energy and Shushumna is prana Shushumna is prana the center nadi so the right brain is feminine because it is regulated by lunar energy and left brain is masculine it is regulated by Pingala, right breath cycle. Even in 24 hours, every 90 minute, one and a half hour, your breath pattern changes. Sometimes you breathe through the right nostril, sometimes you breathe to the left nostril. Even in the right nostril, there are these, suppose, this is the triangle, tip of the nose, this is septum, And these are the eyes, okay? The guy is sleeping like this and looking at the nose. So, when air is touching the tip of the nose, it is fire element. If the air is touching the angle of the nose, it is water element. When air is touching the side of the nostril, air element. And when air touches the septum here, earth element. And in deep meditation, air is just coming to the central space, Akash. So, how your breathing is happening? If you are breathing through the right nostril with fire element, you will become irritable. You will become angry, judgmental, critical. Your whole neurochemistry is governed by breath cycle. If you want to do research, I will help you do research. And let us do research and prove to the whole world that breath cycle can change your personality. You can do NIH research. I don't know whether they will sanction money for that or not. It depends. But this is very interesting. 
if you are, if you are breathing to the left nostril and water element you will become emotional you will cry you become sensitive means your psyche your psychological behavior pattern changes because of the change in the breath cycle so the right brain is feminine and when you write poem when you do artwork you are more intuitive you compose a music so music art intuition poetry and religion these are the activity of the right brain when poet is writing a poem he or she using some part of the right brain when artist is working on some wonderful art picture painting picture he or she is using some part of the right brain left brain is masculine aggressive competitive logical mathematical scientific that is left brain so when scientist is observing under high power microscope he is using left brain logical brain even whether your brain will be logical at this moment or more romantic at this moment or more intuitive at this moment it depends upon your breath cycle what a wonderful discovery they have done so just by doing alternate nostril breathing pranayama poetry will come i am telling my own experience when i am doing more left nostril pranayama beautiful art comes beautiful poetry comes this is my own experience so you can change your personality you can change your attitude you can change completely your psyche just through pranayama because right cycle left cycle breath ida pingala saman tari sati shushumna jan shushumna is a pathway of god realization so your breath cycle is very important some people have deviated nasal septum their left side they have only right side breathing people who breathe only through the right side they get pitta disorder hives rash acidity they become very judgmental critical angry and there is opposite side if the deviated nasal septum is to the right side you are always breathing through the left side you will get cough disorder cold congestion cough sinus infection hypothyroidism diabetes all this cough disorder because left cycle breathing i will tell you one funny story one of my friend he had a deviated nasal septum to the right side and the veda says while making love if you are breathing to the left nostril then conceived baby will be female he had four daughters <laughs> four daughters can you imagine and in india to have boy boy is important because he was a rich guy and he need boy rich guy needs boy to carry on his lineage so he say is there anything in ayurved which can give me a boy i say come to my clinic i will examine you i thoroughly examine him boy his deviated nasal septum was to the right he was always cold very very feminine i say there is one simple operation called smr operation will correct your nasal bridge and let us see so the ent surgeon was my friend i call him i say this is my client he needs to be corrected his nasal septum they did that operation first time in his life he felt the warmth he say my god i am feeling warm since this operation i say now see follow step by step okay don't be in a rush <laughs> if you really want to have boy still there is no chance you can plug your right, left nostril 
left nostril with a big cotton plaid and then enjoy your program. So, <laughs> oh, this is a true story, you know. And boy, his wife conceived in India to determine sex through uh, ultrasound is illegal because people are weird. Once they know it is a girl, they do MTP, medical termination of pregnancy. And they are killing the female fetus, which is weird. I don't understand the humanity behind it. This woman, she was pregnant and she gave birth to the boy. He was so happy. This is one simple example that breath cycle can change the gender of the fetus. There is another cute little story. That woman, she was pregnant, they have done confirmative tests, they were pregnancy tests, and some guy did sneaky lane, he they did some without telling anybody. They did ultrasound, they say it is a girl. See, see, I already have five girls. Can Ayurveda help me to give a boy? It is confirmed that it is a girl. I say, still there is one last chance. I told her to take, you know, columnar root of banyan? Banyan has a columnar root. Water. What a vruksha. What a vruksha means bany entry and their columnar roots. So, first day you have to go to the tree, ask for forgiving. You can take permission of the tree and you can request the tree that I am going to use your root for having male child. So, please help me. And then, next day morning, take a bath, honor the tree, and plug out those pink color columnar root a banyan tree, just about a handful, and then grind them and put in a cheesecloth and squeeze and take out the juice and put odd drops, like three or five drops, into the right nostril. This is called Pumsavanavidi. You can change the gender of the baby. And you will surprise. That woman gave birth to the girl, but she was very masculine. <laughs> like a boy, she was masculine. So, what I want to share with you, <laughs> you know, whatever science develop is gorgeous, wonderful, but still we don't know many mysteries in this world. And science doesn't have any sensitive instrument to check these things. Perhaps in future, science will be totally different. And Ayurveda is a very ancient Vedic system of medicine. Plus, Ayurveda is very spiritual. It deals with prana. Ayurveda deals with mudra, meditation, yoga. So, yoga and Ayurveda are the two sides of the same coin. Yoga came to America hundred years ago. Swami Vivekananda brought yoga. Ayurveda came quite late, maybe 25, 30 years. Maybe 30 years, right? Or more than that. So, a couple of decades, Ayurveda came here. But Ayurveda has great potential. I think medical doctors should study Ayurveda. And there is, this is my dream. In America, there will be integrated medical hospital where Ayurveda and allopathic medicine our practice together. That is my dream. God willing, it will happen. So, now, I am done with it. Any question you have, <laughs> you can ask me. Correct. Absolutely. So that is why Pingala will increase Pitta, P, and Ida will increase Kapha, 
के सुषुम्ना इज वात दैट इज वाई योगी इज बिफोर मेडिटेशन दे डू अल्टरनेट नॉस्टिल ब्रीदिंग प्राणायामा देन इडा पिंगला बिकम इक्वल देन इट ओपन्स द सेंट्रल कैनाल ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दो अकॉर्डिंग टू मॉडर्न फिजियोलॉजी देर इज नथिंग हैपनिंग इन द सेंट्रल कैनाल ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड ऑल एसेंडिंग ट्रैक डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक ग्रे मैटर एंड रिफ्लेक्स आर इट इज ऑल इन द पेरी फेरी ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड बट सेंट्रल कैनाल ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड is continuation into the third ventricle and third ventricle is chidakash it is a special space where equilibrium maintain third ventricle fourth ventricle lateral horn of the third ventricle inferior horn of the third ventricle this whole three dimensional picture of the ventricle they are all connected therefore that space within the brain is a space of pure awareness pure consciousness that is the bliss so what you say is true any other question if you do the the eight pranayams in the morning and you do surya vedana and then at the end before meditation you do nadi shodana does that sort of negate Yeah, it depends upon your own prakriti and your own vikruti. <coughs> What we will do? We have a package of seven pranayama. We start with warming, like heating, like a basri ka. Then after basri ka, we will do kapala bhati. In between basri ka and kapala bhati, we will do bahya kumbak, outer retention. Then your body is warm. Then you can do anulom milom or nadi shuddhi. then that nadi shuddhi will do the cleansing of 72000 nadis then after that you can do agni sar which is very important then your intercostal muscles are ready without heating if you do pranayama you will get muscle spasm so to avoid that this is a package of seven pranayama with basrika kapalabhati bahya kumbak anulom vilom which is nadi shuddhi type agni sar then brahmari then ujjayi and udgit this is the package of seven pranayama once you learn then you can change according to what you feel comfortable there is no problem am i answering your question well, sort of but i'm curious if they sort of cancel each other out should you choose one do like surya vedana or chandra vedana or should you do them all at once not all of them in one sitting i do in one sitting every day morning when i wake up one hour is given to pran oh i am in ecstasy i am in joy i am in bliss you know and you will get bliss by just following that package package of seven pranayama but every school has different concept so there are so many schools of thought even in pranayama i am not saying that you should follow my way my way is not the only way perhaps your way is the best way so just follow what you feel comfortable the bottom line is you should feel happy healthy blissful then that is your pranayama of course there is a that type is for example if a person has migraine headache pitt type then we do shitali pranayama and shitali will calm down pitt the migraine headache will go away if a person has acidity acid reflux and because of that they get temporal headache for that you can do shitkari shitkari goes through the angle of the mouth to the parotid gland and it will calm down acidity and it will help temporal headache if a person has generalized body ache then do anulom milom 
very powerful because it does cleansing of 72,000 nadi and anulom milom pranayama is good for generalized body aches and pain. It acts like a Tylenol. Yeah, it works. Huh? Then you can do inhale and bring the air to the mouth and do and then spit it out. So this is called Kavala Pranayama. Kavala means you are inhaling, taking breath, bringing some air to the mouth and do this swishing and spit it out. And that is so good. Good for receding gums, good for gingivitis and good for tooth infection. Yeah. I was wondering if you could clarify, I kind of got a little lost when you were describing the um, nostrils and the septum, and you said the left nostril is related with water and emotions, but on your diet... No, water, water is on both sides, see? Okay. See, this is... This is, uh, one minute, let me put here. This is right nostril, this is left nostril, okay? Now, the water element of the left nostril will make more kapha. Hmm? Kapha is liquid. It will create cold, congestion, cough, and person become emotional. If right breath cycle but water, that is pitta, pitta is also liquid. So that will get more perspiration, hives, rash, urticaria, and irritability. Water is both side. Pitta is watery, kapha is watery. You mentioned high cholesterol. Is there a specific um, pranayama? Just... For high cholesterol, <coughs> we can do kapalabhati and agnisar. When you come tomorrow, we will I will show you how to do kapalabhati and agnisar. It is amazing. And just by doing that, you are stimulating your metabolic fire. So, Metabolic disorder can be corrected by Agni Sarakriya and Kapalabhati. Kapalabhati is called Jivan Sati, means it is life companion. Kapalabhati, Jivan Sati, <coughs> life companion. <coughs> In, when you do the, um, I think your recommendations for Agni Sar, you say only 10. Is yeah, don't, more, don't. <coughs> because if you do too much, then you are weakening your uh, esophageal orifice within the diaphragm. You will likely develop hiatal hernia. Don't do that. We don't want that pranayama creating hiatal hernia. No, no, no. I think whatever speaker is sharing with you has a great scientific background behind it. So whatever he tells you, do that much. Don't do excess. Oh, thank you, dear. <coughs> oh, sir. Um, I've read somewhere that the body itself has a natural rhythm, like for a certain time, uh, the left nostril closes and the breath usually, you know, we take it through the right and then maybe after two minutes, the right nostril closes and you breathe through the left only. So, is that true? And if it is, then if you do uh, pranayama like Nadi Shodna, where you're using alternate nostrils or kapalbhati, how does it affect it or it doesn't affect the... Uh, no, no, if you do not do anything, after uh, 200 years you will become enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> but by doing pranayama, we accelerate that process. We improve, accelerate that process, na Nadi Shuddhi, cleansing. So, it will not affect the natural rhythm. Suppose, in your case, your breath cycle changes every 15 minutes. So, if you do pranayama, then it will change, it's, it is supposed to change between one and a half hour. Then it will go back to the biorhythm. That is why, by doing pranayama, prana acquires your genetic code of prakriti and then pran will yield the real prakriti. So, um, not doing anything, the mother nature will take care. 
But if we help the mother nature by doing pranayama, then it will accelerate the process of healing. Very beautiful question. Hmm? So, um, I think that you know, one of the goals is uh, even rhythmic breathing. And, but if you only uh, speak when you're exhaling, and uh, also when you're eating, um, those speaking and eating seems like they would be disruptive. To of course, normal yeah. Breathing. Mm-hmm. So, that is why. That is why I never give lecture while eating. <laughs> it, it will disturb the bio pra- pattern. Don't do, don't discuss politics while eating. Right? That is why while eating, ajalpam, ahasan, maunam, means don't crack joke while eating. You will choke. Joke will choke. Hmm? And uh, don't um, talk about anything. Because we are disturbing the rhythm of prana. So, you are absolutely right, and Ayurveda says the same thing, while eating, it should be meditative. Take a lump of food, put into the mouth, chew it, bring awareness, bring mindfulness, and that eating becomes meditation. Then, you will never do overeating. You will never do emotional eating. That is why eating with awareness is meditation. Even while walking, walk mindfully by watching your breath. And when you walk with awareness, walking becomes meditation. Then your walk will be graceful. You are touching the Mother Earth with delicate feet. Buddha, when he used to walk, as if he was not walking, he was floating. And when Buddha walked with awareness and with such a rhythmic breath, even though it was not the green grass to grow, green grass grew for Buddha. When Buddha walked through the woods, even though it was not the season for the trees to blossom, trees blossom for Buddha. This is the blossoming of not tree but awareness. This is the blossoming of green grass, which is awareness. That is why your whole life is a meditation. The way you walk, the way you eat, the way you take shower. And this is the divine gift of pranayama. The one pranayama I will want to share with you, which is a very natural pranayama. <coughs> Thank you, sir. You can take a pillow. (coughs) And you sit quiet and watch your breath. During inhalation, say the sound so. And during exhalation, say the sound hum. This is very powerful meditation. So, during inhalation, and hum during exhalation. So when you sit quiet, close your eyes and focus your attention to the third eye. And the moment you start breathing, right from beginning till the ending, one word, so goes directly into the third ventricle, fourth ventricle. Stay there. Um, 
So Soham is a very profound mantra. Inhale with so, exhale with hum. In order to make you understand, I utter that word. You are not supposed to utter, mutter or murmur. Feel it silently through your breath. This is very profound. Ancient Vedic mantra. Just by doing soham, soham. It is a natural pranayama. Inhale with so, exhale with hum. Then if you like to stay in the center of the brain, stay there. If you like to stay outside, nine inches away from the nostril, stay there. Because meeting point of so and hum is pure cosmic consciousness. And this is a very profound, this is the top secret of Kriya Yoga. This is a profound mantra Baba Muktananda gave. Paramahamsa Yogananda gave reverse, hum so, inhale with hum, exhale with so. Even if you inhale with hum and exhale with so, hum so, hum so, hum, it will become so hum. So it doesn't matter whether you inhale so and exhale hum, don't get entangled. Whatever you feel comfortable, just do it. The most important thing is to stay in the gap. There is a silent gap between so and hum. In that silent gap, there is a door to the divinity, door to the infinity, and door to the immensity. So you are eternal, changeless, consciousness and through pranayama you will experience your own immortality your fear of death will go away it will change your life it will change your relationship you will have very positive relationship with everyone because everyone is breathing the birds are breathing, the trees are breathing, the mountains are breathing, the fish in the water is breathing, and the bird in the sky is breathing. Even the galaxy is breathing. NASA scientists, couple of decades ago, they heard that sound, hum. They say, galaxy is humming. So galaxy is still humming. So Soham is a universal mantra. It is a mantra of divinity. Saha aham, I am that, that I am. So dear friend, thank you for coming and blessing the heart of the speaker. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. We will have great time tomorrow. We will learn. This is a great opportunity to explore into insight. Namaste. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvina Vadhita Mastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Devi Sureshwari Bhagavati Gange Tribhuvana Tarini Tarala Tarange Shankara Mauli Viharini Vimale Mama Mati Rastam Tavapada Kamale 
भागीरथि सुखदायिनी माता तव जल महिमा निगमे ख्याता नाम जाने तव महिमानम त्राय कृपा मयि 